you look at the population from the millennials on, there's a lot of people that are gonna need houses in the next few years, and that's not going away. Hey, it's Noel coming to you with another video here. It's been a little while since I did a video. Frankly, it's just been overwhelmed, you know, to give you a quick update of what we're doing. We're working with a couple of funds, one in particular that we're buying homes in about 18 markets. We are running a team of agents across all of these different markets, buying homes off the MLS, buying homes from builders, um, creating relationships with builders as I've been doing for several years um, around entitled lots to build on, all of these different things. The single family rental market is still on fire. Values are going up. There's a need for housing. You look at the population from the millennials on, there's a lot of people that are gonna need houses in the next few years and that's not going away. And the builders aren't necessarily keeping up. The cost of materials are going crazy. What is interesting though, is I'm starting to see a lot of different business models supplying to the demand of homes that are needed. And so this is around new build homes. It's around buying and rehabbing homes. Look, here's the thing. As long as people have a home to move into, that creates a home they can sell. So if we can get a lot of these move up buyers and get them into a new home, their home is perfect for a working class, middle class rental or for a homeowner to buy. So it's this misnomer, in my opinion, that the funds that are buying rental homes are taking stock away from owner occupied buyers. If you look at it out of context, yes, you know, that home that is being bought by a fund cannot be bought by an owner occupied buyer, except for the fact that there is a waiting list of renters who want to rent a single family home, who do not want to buy or can't buy for several reasons that need this home to live in. And they like it because they can have the homeowner lifestyle in a property that's, you know, in the foreseeable future, not going to be sold to an owner occupied buyer. And there's that demand. I mean, when we're talking about 35% of all the single family homes are rental homes, well, think about that. Look at your housing stock in your market and think about how many of those homes will over time turn into rentals. And I talk about this all the time. So the demand's there, the space is being institutionalized. We cannot find enough homes to buy. So, you know, as much as this is an update, it's a call to action. Builders, rehabbers, land developers, I wanna to talk to you because we have some funds that are buying at very aggressive yields that are in this for the long term, that understand the market and the dynamics and they're leaning on us to execute their plan for them. And that could be, you know, a under the radar institutional family office fund that's backed by some big money to larger institutional funds that are coming to us, coming to me and saying, hey, I need more. I need entitled lots in Dallas. I'm looking at stuff in Houston. Let's check out Alabama. Let's look at the Southeast. How saturated is Florida getting? I mean, it's insane the amount of people that are moving there and look at the population migration patterns and even places like California that a lot of people wrote off are coming back because people need a place to live. I think what's changed now is it only took a few million people to decide that they wanna be location neutral to really tip things along with the millennials, along with interest rates, and then you're seeing the cost of materials and labor and look, it's inflation, right? And where's inflation gonna go? We don't know, but I'm starting to talk to builders who are saying that they're hitting that ceiling of what they can sell the home for as far as affordability for buyers. So a lot of moving parts, quick update. Let me know what you think. Love to hear from you. Thanks.